Welcome back. Um, I'm very proud to announce that Leonard Lee is uh, is joining our conference. He's uh, an analyst. He's down to earth, and he's gonna tell you his vision on the IoT market. Enjoy his talk. Next curve. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope that everyone is having a great start to 2021. My name is Leonard Lee. I am the Managing Director and Founder of NextCurve, an ICT research and advisory firm that works with some of the leading tech companies on the future of their business. And uh, I want to thank Binky and the team at the Things Industries for inviting me to speak today at the Things Conference 2021. It's an honor and it is a pleasure. And in this keynote talk, I will be sharing some of my insights on why 75% of IoT projects apparently fail and why IoT has wallowed in POC purgatory and what we need to do to get out of it based on my 28 years of experience in tech industry research and technology and management consulting. Uh, in this session, I will cover the following items. Firstly, I will talk about POCs in product development versus POCs in digital transformation. I will also touch on why these POCs tend to lead nowhere except for maybe a few. Second, I will go over the factors that contribute to the high percentage of failed projects and the reasons why vendors get themselves perpetually caught in the POC mosh. And finally, I will share some recommendations on how vendors can get off the IoT POC hamster wheel and how enterprises can change their approach to IoT to garner successful outcomes and conclusions from the IoT initiatives without using the term IoT or the Internet of Things. So let's start with POCs. I've always found uh, that the idea that so many IoT startups and established companies do POCs or proof of concepts, strange. Uh, why do so many IoT vendors lead into sales opportunities with POCs with uh, prospective customers? And why do so many enterprise end users seemingly entrap these poor little startups in some hellish cycle of pre-sales POC giveaways. Uh, more often than not, when you speak to the founders of these IoT startup firms, they are frustrated by the difficulty of getting customers or prospects to pay up. Uh, so how did we get into this unusual situation as an industry? Was an IoT supposed to be easy to sell? Didn't every business want it? Uh, evidently, the answer is not exactly yes. So. Let's look at POCs in the context of product development and POCs in the context of a digital transformation program of an enterprise. Because over the course of the years working with IoT startups and advising enterprises on IoT-enabled transformation, I have observed some pervasive confusion that has contributed to the maligning of uh, what is otherwise a pretty helpful exercise to the ninth level of hell. So what are POCs? POCs, uh, you know, they're nothing new. We've, um, we've seen the approach used in industry for decades to test new products and services, uh, services and service concepts. Uh, it's commonly used in product as well as software development to demonstrate functionality and to provide technical verification that an idea or a solution is feasible uh, and is something that can be developed. POCs can be used to test and validate different uh, design options as well as to determine um, which mode is better than the other. In the context of enterprise transformation projects, however, POCs have been traditionally used to test vendor solutions for fit to an organization's needs and technology environments. From the perspective of the business folks who know little about the technical aspects of IoT or likely don't know or care what IoT is, these POC activities are used commonly as a way to demonstrate shortlisted uh, vendor solutions to an organization as well as to verify the functional and non-functional requirements of the business, uh, which are important selection criteria for vendor selection, vendor or technology selection. And if an enterprise gets to a point where they're selecting a technology vendor, they've typically already bought into the IoT-enabled transformation initiative. Yet more often than not, I hear an outsized 
portion of IoT vendors who tell me that POCs are used to prove the business value of their IoT offerings. The confusion and this descent into POC purgatory or hell seems to happen when IoT vendors take a product or software development mindset forward uh, in the way it engages with enterprise buyers. In other words, many IoT vendors approach a POC as an opportunity to co-create with the customer and effectively create a pilot implementation of their solution with the hope of selling a few modules, connections, and providing analytics on a reoccurring revenue basis uh, by putting skin in the game. And in the end, the IoT vendor ends up giving up a sizable revenue opportunity in consulting and software development services. And it's little wonder so many vendors feel they are in this perpetual cycle of running POCs for prospects before they see a sale. Uh, I have yet to meet an enterprise that is not game uh, for a bunch of free consulting, which is what many IoT vendors believe they have to offer to get their foot in the door with a prospective client. And ironically, consulting services are not the game many IoT vendors are in. Uh, they want to sell devices, software, middleware, uh, platforms and connectivity because everything is becoming uh, everything as a service, right? Uh, you have to be in the as a service business. Uh, <laughs> So uh, why do IoT uh, projects fail? Well, given this POC approach pushed by IoT vendors, it's become so prevalent, it is no wonder that enterprises have experienced a high percentage of IoT failures. If we buy into the notion that most IoT initiatives don't get past the POC phase, it appears that it is because the IoT vendor pushes the technology before the business problem to be solved uh, out of perceived necessity to secure business. And in particular, those IoT vendors that are not positioned to deliver the full solution, as it were, find themselves potentially convincing the prospective customer that this IoT stuff is for the birds through their you know, s seemingly altruistic efforts. Uh, that might highlight technical viability but fall short in demonstrating business value. Now, um, projects of any sort require commitment and stakeholders who are serious about their investment in a charter for a transformation and are fully bought into the value that a solution is expected to deliver. The things that make IoT projects challenging are the following. They are not about IoT, first of all. Uh, many of us still call them IoT projects, and this typically means little to a business stakeholder. We need to remind ourselves that IoT is just a black hole of technologies and solution patterns that continues to suck in new technologies and solution patterns as they emerge from the early phases of the hype cycle. And to business folks, it has much to about nothing other than the one-on-one -on -one they get from an online course on digital. And if you want to win hearts and minds of the board of an oil and gas major, for example, try something like the super remote zero touch well operations project. Uh, it has a much better ring to it. Uh, next, uh, IoT technology is massive and complex. IoT is difficult to get a handle on uh, as a technology given the expansive scope and the high velocity of change in the technology and vendor landscapes. And unlike the world of ERP, there are a few out-of-the-box packaged IoT solutions, uh, but we're slowly moving in that direction. But the IoT technology universe is still very crowded and fragmented. And uh, the IoT uh, talent gap. Uh, transformation projects that require IoT require technical resources and expertise across a wide range of areas, including uh, IT, operational technology, and communications technology, which are conver converging to boot. Then you need the business experts and the industry experts who know enough about IoT to engage in a viable solutioning discussion. And the talent pool of folks who can speak to different languages across these domains is small. Finally, a developer's mindset. A transformation project is not a custom software development project. It's about integration. And if you are developing your product with your customer, your stuff is probably not ready for market. Set your expectations with your customer because most business stakeholders don't like being a subject of what they likely consider an experiment. So let's talk about recommendations. If these challenges and uh, root causes of pre-sales and project angst uh, resonate with you, 
Uh, I'd like to share some recommendations that will hopefully improve the outcomes of your efforts and get you engaged in conversations of value with your prospects and customers without dwelling on the term IoT. Let's start with the enterprise uh, end users. Uh, first off, transformation is not just about organizational change or technologies. Neither should be the core of your IoT strategy. It's all about the business solution. Um, organizational change is table stakes for any transformation program. If you don't know this by now, hire a good program manager and change management consultant. Um, oftentimes, well-designed IoT solutions are transparent to the organization. They're just easy to use, and many even factor out people from processes and functions, so no training required. Uh, IoT technologies are, are uh, just enablers, and leave that topic to your IoT architect. And focus on sound solution designs that work functionally, technically, and financially, but most importantly, delivers against expectations set by the strategy and the charter of the transformation program. And ultimately, expectations at the business stakeholder level define the criteria for a successful project. So if you don't know how to translate technology into the language of business, learn how. Most of us technology folks are pretty good at abstraction and virtualization, so this shouldn't be much of a, uh, much of a stretch. Next, get an IoT sa savvy solution architect in your organization. They're apparently more rare than you would think, but absolutely critical for success. So look hard and get the IoT savvy technology solutions architect and those savvy in your business together early on in your program to work with your business stakeholders in designing a solution for your organization that is technically and functionally viable and compelling. This seemingly rare breed of solution architect is great at keeping your systems integrators and vendors honest as well. And as I like to say, IoT is not your father's ERP. Next, good help never comes for free. So don't shortchange IoT experts and consultants who can help you be successful. If your vendor has a few really smart folks who can help you, hire them by giving them a proper project so that they can focus on doing a great job rather than carrying the anxiety of the hours they're giving away for free. Uh, there really isn't a crappier IoT-enabled transformation strategy than one that is done for free. Remember that 80% of the value of IoT can be realized by 20% of the technologies that are being pitched to you by your vendors and SIs. Don't incentivize your IoT partners to make up the freebie they gave you up front by making up for it on the back end. You will probably end up having to redo your strategy work, which happens quite often, or you get an IoT solution that is much more expensive to implement and maintain than it should be. Or your IoT project just goes into the fail bucket. And for vendors, here are my recommendations. Understand your role in the context of your customer's transformation program. How do your offerings map into the solution architecture that will support the customer's transformation objectives? Remember, the folks with the purse strings don't care about the technology and which protocols or tech, uh, con connectivity technology you use. They just want business benefits and outcomes. Figure out how you can be part of that business value conversation uh, whether you latch onto a more strategic theme such as security, cost reduction, efficiency, reliability, resiliency, or all of the above or more. Um, next, carefully contemplate who you partner with to give your offerings business relevance and meaning. Many IoT vendors partner with other vendors from a technical perspective. You also need to have downstream channel partners to get you in the transformation discussion. Find a strategic anchor for your go-to-market. And if you don't have consulting services to engage with enterprise customers at the business level, consider partnering with an SI and POC with them to prove that your offerings work and that they can, uh, they can trust working with you to deliver IoT-enabled business solutions to their customers. And finally, stop giving away free management consulting gigs that you call POCs, especially if consulting is not your forte. These gratis gigs or pre-sales POCs are not POCs. They are pilot phases of an implementation that you should be getting paid for. You might not be helping yourself or your business if you don't capture this value early. In closing, I hope that this talk 
was informative and will help IoT vendors avoid the POC trap and improve the probability of success for IoT-enabled transformation initiatives for enterprises and users. Once again, I'd like to thank the folks at the Things Conference 2021 for inviting me to speak to you today. Have a wonderful 2021.